Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Bill Save Minute. Part of Titan's Bill Save. I'm here with my friend, Vince Link. Vince is with Barrett Financial. We'll be coming to you now. And we're, today we're going to talk about investments and how to finance investment properties. Good morning, Vince. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you, of course. Um, so tell me this. What kind of um, investment properties are relatively easy to finance? Yeah. So investment properties, there's a wide range. And you know the ones that have become popular nowadays are the short-term rentals, the Airbnbs, right? Those are the, the, the money makers, as they call, because they're high uh, revenue income. But those are sometimes harder to qualify for than a traditional. Most investors start off with what is a single family or a multifamily unit type of investment home, right? That is going to cash flow them on a long term lease for uh, rental. Those type of properties are, uh, you know, traditionally going like a conventional financing investment op uh, occupancy. Uh, so on a single family home, meaning one unit, uh, one, one property, not multiple units, uh, you can actually buy it as an investment as little as 15% down. Um, ideally, 15% down is your minimum entry level. 20% is really where you kind of want to be because one reason or two reasons, the rate's going to be a little bit better and then your fees are going to be less because uh, at 15%, they kind of see them as a high risk investment compared to 20%, which is like the traditional conventional type of investment home. Um, you know, investment properties uh, on a conventional product, which is Fannie and Freddie uh, owned, I mean, if they back the loan, you could have 10 properties before, you know, you're technically ineligible for traditional financing. So once you finance 10 homes, then the, the next step would be as another investor would be two options. You could do like a seller finance, which is where the seller carries the note and then you finance direct with the seller or which is a really great loan. It's called debt service covered ratio or DSCR loans. Those loans are more portfolio, meaning that it's bank by bank specific. And there is really no limit of how many homes you have. Uh, you know, as as people, we all max out based off our debt to income for you know qualification. What's great about the DSCR loans or debt service cover ratio is meaning that your income doesn't matter, right? So you could have, you know, you can make a hundred grand, you can make thirty grand. Really, the what matters is that the property cash flows, meaning taking your mortgage payment and your rent, as long as it equates to a positive cash flow. And then it's based off your credit score and how much money you have to put into the deal, right? So those loans you're going to want to see, you know, around the 20 to 25% is really where you want to be ideally. Um, but it, what's great about it is it doesn't matter about your income. So anybody can get started in investing homes. It's not where you have to make a hundred grand, 200 grand, 300 grand to start investing. It's a great product to get people to, you know, leverage wealth in real estate. People, there are so many influencers on um, social media and YouTube who have completely built a massive portfolio using the DSCR loan. And I'm seeing that more and more um, folks want to know what the rent probability is on a property. And so that's a little bit of work to figure out if it doesn't have a tenant in it, if it goes from um, single family to a rental. Um, but it's all pretty quick and easy. So anyone can become an investor, right? Just about yeah. it, right? Absolutely. Yeah. There's no reason not to be an investor, especially as this market, as it's changing, it's a great time to get with an agent that understands the, the way you can build wealth in real estate, right? Which is owning properties. So that way you can leverage your, your money and every month you're getting money, right? That's the goal is like where I want to be retired when money's just coming to me because I own properties so I can pass on to my children. But anybody can start, but I always recommend get with an agent that's going to get you with a great lender to kind of get you on that path to, you know, planning out how to invest. And, uh, you know, DSCRs are great. You can build a great portfolio, uh, you know, go into the short-term rental game where you can build a lot of revenue. Uh, but, you know, you want to make sure you partner with the right people up front because they're going to be able to steer you and make sure you, you know, you don't fail at the beginning and then you don't ever gain that traction to build your portfolio, to build your wealth. What are some good, um, maybe apps or, um, almost websites that people might be able to use to calculate 
um, a good investment versus a bad investment. Are there some of those? Do you know of any? So as far as like rental wise, there's a really good one. It's called rental meter. Um, you can actually go in there, type in your, they give you like a free trial of like, I think it's like up to like five properties, but you can go in there, type in the address, and then you can put what you, you know, based off of the bedrooms, bathroom, square footage. And then you can put what you want to, you think it would rent for. And it will give you a gauge of like, oh, that's too high. That's too low. That's perfect. And then that way you can see what you potentially cash flow is. Now, I always recommend reaching out to a local agent. So that way they can, you know, see the market, tell you what the activity is. Maybe pull rental comps if it's available in their MLS. Uh, but anytime you buy an investment property, there's two ways to do it. You can have the appraiser which will actually pull the comps in the area for the rental amount mm -hmm. and show you what that what that cash flow is. Or if you have an existing tenant, then you can base it off of that. Um, some banks are getting even better of using like the last 12 months of Airbnb income, right? Because that income is so much higher. And those properties are usually a higher price because it's a cash flowing property. So some banks are allowing that 12 months of that last Airbnb income to use as your DSER ratio to show the cash flow of the property. So, so you, again, okay. you can use the DSCR with the, the Airbnb. Yes. So there's certain properties, certain banks that will allow Airbnb income to be considered as rental income. If you're going to use it for that purpose, right? You want to make sure that you're stating your true occupancy that you're going to use it for within your, you know, to your lender, to your agent. So that way everything's done correctly. And if it is an existing Airbnb, you can use the data points that they already have. Yeah, that's great. Um, what would you say stay away from with regards to rental properties? So I always say if it doesn't cash flow, that's a concern, right? Like we, the goal is to cash flow and have appreciation, right? So that way your the appreciation is being is going, and that's a subjective number based off your market, based off the economy, things like that. But if it cash flows, then that renter or those renters are always paying your mortgage, right? So right. if you can combine those two things, that's amazing. Now, if it doesn't cash flow and you're banking on appreciation, that's where people get into some trouble because appreciation is, I mean, the last couple of years have been through the roof, but that's not always the case. And, and, and it's market by market. And so you don't want to just bank on appreciation like, oh, this is going to be a good investment in five years but you're, you're losing $300 a month, right? You right. want to make sure you're putting yourself in a good financial cash flow situation up front. And then appreciation is just a bonus that you're going to be able to uh, get because you're a homeowner, you're an investor. So that's all, what I always say, stay away from. Well, positive cash flow is everything, right? And Absolutely. making sure that you have enough of a buffer and, you know, 10% or whatever it is to make sure on top of, of that you can handle any re repairs that are going to happen in the future and that um, you're, you're making a smart and sound investment. We have to look at every factor when we sell investment properties and that's one of them. So that folks can put their spreadsheet together and do their financials on the property to make sure that's something that's going to be prudent in the future. However, if you hold on to that property for 10 years, 15 years, it's it should appreciate and it should look pretty good considering the market is so in need of property, of Absolutely. housing. So any um, great thoughts for us today? Uh, my thought is, you know, leverage wealth, leverage local you know, people, partner with people. If you want to be an investor, go seek out investors, right? Like go be with people that have done this so that way you can learn from them because that's anytime you buy an investment property, it's a, it's a, it's a big financial position for you and your family. Be smart about it. Take the time, do it correctly, leverage great people, partner with local agents that are going to be able to make sure that you're being put in the best position. And that's that's really the best you can do. And then if it makes sense to you, then purchase and keep growing your business and your, your portfolio. Totally agree. And there are so many great Facebook groups of in local investors and statewide investors, national investors. There are, you can always look at your business journals to see what's coming and what's happening in your market, um, multifamily, duplexes, quadplex, all those things are available. And um, is there, this is out of the blue, but are, is there anything for farm investments or agricultural investments? Um, there, there, 
There is, but again, that's not something that I deal with to where like I would be comfortable advising. If you're going to do that, I would go to like your local ag bank or ag credit union. They're going to be the ones that are really going to help you because they're going to be in that world, right? right? That's a specialty type of thing. And I say, if you're going to do that, go speak to the people that deal with that every day because that that's something that is a higher risk. Anytime you buy land, you're going to have more money down. It's more of an investment up front because it's raw land or it's an ag investment. So go speak to the people that are going to be able to guide you to that and you know ultimately seek out that local trusted investor. Go like you said, go on a Facebook group, find someone that's done it and and just say, "Hey, can I can I borrow 2 minutes of your time? I really want to learn this." And that way you can do the due diligence that you need to do. Yeah, and people are so kind and they want to share that information. People want to Absolutely. be helpful and and share. And those are the people you want to surround yourself any anyway. Well, thank you so much, Vince, and tell everybody how they can reach you if they would like to talk about investment loans with you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, you can give me a call, text me. My number is 469-712-3915. You can find me on Facebook under Vince Link. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as uh, your lender link. Um, search me, DM me, message me. Uh, any questions, uh, You know, let me know. I'll be here to be a resource. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll put your information um, in the link below and just awesome. like and share our post. Thanks so much. Y'all have a great day. Thanks, Vince. Thanks, Karen.